he would also be incredibly proud of the year that we all had together. And um, I want to thank you for that year. We had an amazing year in America as both Stephanie and Christoph talked about the momentum that we've generated uh, really together. And it's so encouraging for me to look at our portfolio of products and see a representation of all of you inside our products and our services as well, because we're not creating them alone. We're creating them based on the feedback that you continue to give us. It only happens, it's only all possible when we work the way that we are working. And I'm convinced that this is the best extended ecosystem in the industry. Um, we also realise that we need to earn your business every single day and your partnership and your trust and your loyalty. It's not lost on me or any member of my team. We are completely focused on building on our success and on the platform. And I am personally committed, as I have been uh, since I joined this company, to accelerating channel growth. We're doing 87% of our business with and through the channel, and I only see that growing in the future, not contracting. I would also say when I'm asked internally what I fear the most, it's not Dell or, or Lenovo or the Xerox or Lexmark. Um, we have to compete against great competitors every single day. My biggest fear is arrogance and complacency. It's brought many a, a great company undone. There was no place for it at HP. If you ever see it, uh, make sure that you reach out to me or any member of my team. Easy to find, Dion at hp.com. Uh, we need to remain humble. And when we do that, I'm sure that we can continue to enjoy the success that we've been having. Christoph asked me the kind of three things that are top of mind and I'll spend just the next few moments talking about them. The first one is, how do we continue to accelerate our partner growth? There were many pundits, as Stephanie mentioned, that, uh, that said, we can't do this. There's no way that we can grow these core businesses, but we've proven them wrong. How do we continue to do that off the back of increasingly difficult market pairs? How do we keep investing in new and growing your businesses? The second thing is, it's important to continue to deliver to grow in our core, but it's also important to invest in our future. What will HP look like in 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time? Where will we create those investments and provide the transparency to all of you to enable you to make decisions about where you will invest in your companies? And the third thing that I think is not often talked about enough in business and ought to be is ensuring that you're winning, but how you win is even more important, winning the right way. So I'll spend a moment. Let me turn to the first, which is accelerating partner growth. In the past two and a half years, we've built an incredibly strong, robust foundation with all of you. Our strategy and our commitment to the channel is unwavering. We've generated an enormous amount of momentum. The momentum in business is incredibly important. But momentum can be disrupted or momentum can be accelerated. I choose the latter, and I'm sure all of you do. Well, so let's leverage the momentum that we have to continue to propel us forward. Our strategy, as Christoph mentioned, has not changed significantly over actually the last four years when we talked about it even the old HP co organization. Um, but the world around us is changing. Last year at this forum, we talked a lot about the Omni Channel and its impact on consumer and commercial segments. Indeed, as I think about our very large partner community around the world, more than 250,000 channel partners. We see that we have partners on a spectrum, the spectrum of the journey from purely transactional partners at one end, low cost, low OPEX, low sales price, really selling on price, all the way up to extremely sophisticated, digitally enabled, contractual service oriented partners. There are very few partners that live on the extreme poles of that spectrum. Most of us in the room here and around the world are scattered somewhere along that spectrum. But indeed, the more profitable and the fastest growing partners are more to the right of that spectrum and to the left. And so when I think of digital enablement, what a digital partner looks like to me is a partner that is very sophisticated, has a very good understanding and connection of all its subsystems and all of its products and offerings, and is collecting enormous amounts of customer data, and being able to share that data with your customers to enable them to have a 
deeper, richer insight of their particular operation. They take these large customer data lakes, which in and of themselves aren't important, but the insights that they gain from them are incredibly important. And that helps customers make different decisions and run their businesses differently. They're driving efficiency, they're driving security, and they're driving productivity for their customers. And they're operating and offering advanced services and support from birth to burial. <coughs> Knowing more about your customers, of course, helps transform you from competing purely on price to competing on real, true value. So no matter where you are on that journey and on that spectrum, from pure transactional to fully digitally enabled service-driven organisation, we want to be your partner of choice. We want to provide you with the tools, the systems and the solutions to enable you to accelerate yourself towards the far right of that spectrum to make you more meaningful to your customers. Because no doubt, in this new service-based economy that we live in, there is enormous opportunity for those that are more to the right. Analysts predict over the next couple of years, services will grow 40%. Indeed, it's a more profitable part of the market and a more sticky part of the market for you to be involved with. So the opportunity to develop deeper strategic relationships with your customers is what's on my mind. How you become a trusted advisor in your customers' businesses is on my mind. So what do we do today to help you accelerate? Well, if you look at our core, we take things that you know customers care about but aren't strategic and enable you to be able to have more insights through the products and services that we offer. You're all familiar with management services. It's a very fast part, growing part of our business. It's just growing two times the market rate. We have made significant investments in ensuring that we can claim the world's most secure printers on the planet. We continue to make those investments. And we made a significant investment in acquiring Samsung to open up the A355 billion dollar market opportunity there. That integration is going according to plan and we expect that that will provide growth opportunities for many years to come. We're gaining market share year over year and sequentially as we expected to do. We're finding partners now when they put in A3, it's dragging more A4 into their, into their opportunities and vice versa. Because indeed a customer isn't ever just an A3 partner or an A4 partner. They're a printing, they're a printing customer we need to be able to offer it all. Uh, we're going to continue to invest in R&D, in putting the right predictive sensors and technology into our products to ensure that you're getting the right customer insight and data and predictive nature of when failures will occur so that you can reduce the number of truck rolls, that you're getting more customer insight about usage that enables you to make more informed decisions on behalf of your customers. And we're leveraging our managed print services platform uh, to offer device as a service, using that same muscle to accelerate PCs as a service. This business grew for us nearly 200% last year, but what's more impressive for me as I look into our systems is the multi-billion dollar pipeline that we've created together with you around device as a service, and this continues to be the fastest growing pipeline that we have inside our business in total by now. It's a unique multi-platform operating system. Uh, supports all of the operating systems because we recognize that a customer doesn't just have one platform inside their company. If you need to manage an entire fleet, you have to indeed support an entire fleet. And I'm sure that the team will go into painstaking details with you uh, to ensure that you understand the unique differentiators that we have built into the platform. We'll continue to have a massive investment in security. This is only going to become more complex in the future, not less. Uh, we'll include those sensors in our products to ensure that we're getting good insights around the performance of our machines and giving you the insights about when things will fail before they fail so that you can ensure that you're providing the right level of service to your customers. So lots of work that uh, both Ron and Rico will take you through um, in a moment. And for our retail partners in the room, I think we've enjoyed a lot of success around our gaming and premium uh, offerings. We'll continue to invest heavily in those areas. It comes with higher revenue and higher operating profit. Uh, we're making a lot of investments in virtual reality, uh, 
voice of the course is, is beginning to accelerate. We're doing that across both personal systems and groups. Um, there's plenty of opportunity to accelerate in our retail business, and I know that uh, Ron, who follows me, will excite you with, with what the teams are doing, and we have that on display outside these halls. But there's also an enormous amount of work going on inside Eureka's print shop, um, where we are looking to not only accelerate, but make print more relevant to a generation that's never printed before, really unlocking the power of print, not only in the home, but in the office, as well as our graphic solutions, which we'll touch on as well. And yes, design matters in print too. We learned about that through our PC uh, work that we've done around design. And I think what you're going to see um, in the future are, are products that look vastly different from the way printers have looked for the past 20 or 30 years. Design matters and it matters to customers. Transformation of the core business isn't enough. We have to think about what we want to invest in to drive future growth over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So the second thing on my mind is where we invest in the future. As our society, as our global needs, and our global economy digitally transforms. There's not a question in my mind as to if it will happen, it's just a question of when and what pace and sequence. And nowhere is this more apparent than in the $12 trillion manufacturing industry, which is largely available today. At the World Economic Forum earlier this year, as I spoke to dozens and dozens of CEOs and many heads of state and government officials, uh, in every single conversation I'm prompted from me, they wanted to understand what was happening with digital manufacturing, what was happening with robotics, what was happening with the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, so um, top CEOs and world leaders alike are very focused populations of countries, where jobs are going to come from in the future, how they need to reshape and reinvest in really disrupting for all the right reasons uh, this $12 trillion manufacturing industry to drive the fourth industrial revolution. Um, for us, in our 3D printing business, it's, it's been an exciting time. We just released a new lower cost platform called the 3 and 500 series, um, and it's a full, full color platform between sixty and hundred thousand dollars versus our production systems which are about five hundred thousand dollars. An interesting story just to give you an idea of how as a customer I think about ourselves, HP on HP, with this product. When we initially looked at the plan of record, there were twenty-five parts that were going to be three D printed inside that printer. And the only way you can be a 3D printed part is if it makes more economical sense for you to 3D print the part than to do it using traditional methods. So 25 parts were identified. There's 100 engineers working on this, mechanical, electrical engineers. These guys were used to designing for analog worlds, so and we took one digital expert and worked with those 100 analog designers, and we went from 25 parts to 145 parts that now made sense when you redesign the part to print it digitally rather than analog fashion. It made more economical sense when you lower the cost of the bomb. And just to give you a sense of what opportunity that unlocked, it means that our providers, the people that are building these machines for us, have to buy 25 of our $500,000 systems to support the volume on that one product alone. That's $12.5 million of revenue. It saved us as a company $3 million in tooling. It saved us three to five months in time to market for that product. And it produces roughly $3 million of annuity revenue every year in supplies and materials and services. Imagine the kind of competitive advantage this can provide many of your customers when they unlock and understand the power of digital manufacturing. As parts become digital from birth to burial, it's almost like the app on your phone that's constantly updating and improving itself. If we find a part that we can optimize by changing the structure of that part, then the very next product we produce incorporates that change. And so you have products that are constantly evolving and changing over time. It's really, really powerful. So in five to 10 years, design and manufacturing will be unrecognizable how it is today. Supply chains will collapse, manufacturing 
will democratize, goods will move much closer to where the customers are, there'll be mass personalization, and most of all, no waste from a capital perspective or materials perspective. So together we can lead not just the industrial, next industrial revolution, we can lead the next sustainability revolution. I think that's a really important point and it brings me to my third point. How do we build a brighter future for us all? How do we win the right way? As we accelerate, it's not just about revenue and profit. It's about how we measure success to incorporate our impact on sustainability, our ability to protect the environment, our ability to increase diversity and inclusion, and our ability to invest in our communities that we serve. We serve many of them, 170 countries around the world, and all the sub-communities that we serve within that. Together, with all of you, with our partners, we can redefine the impact we have on our planet, our people, and our communities. Because it's not just the right thing to do, it's also a business imperative. Today's customers, today's investors, and today's employees, particularly younger employees, really, really genuinely care. Customers buy from companies and brands that do good, that want to. And it's only going to accelerate in the future. So sustainability drives business and it makes a difference. And all of us can make a difference. HP and our 250,000 channel partners. And FY17, just to give you some dark points of how much difference we indeed can make and how it affects business, we had a 38% increase in deals where sustainability is a requirement. 38%. That brought us to roughly $10 million of our $55 billion of revenue. HP business that had some kind of sustainability requirement within it. And we won $1 billion of revenue where sustainability was a key driving factor. It wasn't price, it wasn't functionality. It was sustainability, it was a billion dollars. That's a material number. Together, all of us have the responsibility to lead and to take action. Don't just Ride along the train, drive the train together with us. I'm proud of what we've achieved, but we have a lot more work to do. We have to earn your business every day, we have to remain humble, we have to listen, and we have to adapt and change. And we all stand here united, everyone here in the room from HP, and committed to doing that to ensure that we can continue to raise the bar. And when we do that, we'll continue to to prove the pundits wrong, that you can continue to grow a business and you can set the business up for long-term success in the next generation of uh, people in your company and in ours. I'm convinced that our best years lie ahead of us. I want to thank you for all you do. And I want to invite Ron Conklin up on stage to talk more about how we're going to accelerate together in personal systems. Ron, the rocket fuel company.